We started last Sunday talking about the laws of harvest, the laws of harvest. And last Sunday, we talked about the imminence, the urgency, the emergency of sharing the gospel and harvesting lost souls that are out there. There are lost people outside this building. There might be some of you lost today. Most of you I know, and I know you know Jesus. Amen? But somebody could sneak in here. We've had that happen a time or two. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That somebody come in and they find Jesus at church? Yeah. Amen? That's the kind of church I want to pastor. Yeah. Amen? It's people yeah. experience God yes. when they come to church. Amen? The church is supposed to be alive. We're going to look at a second law of the harvest, and it is in the Word. It is called seed time and harvest. This isn't in my notes, but I'm going to refer to it, and I'll probably pick up on it next week. Uh, I'm going to move on. I don't need to dig into that. I'm going to respect what I got on paper right now, unless the Holy Spirit nudges me again. Amen. If, he, if you think it's a nudge and you forget it immediately, it might not be the Holy Spirit if you've told him to lead you, right? I'd like us to read a passage. We read it last Sunday. And this is the theme passage for this series. I'm planning on three weeks, but who knows what we're going to do. We'll finish it up whenever the Holy Spirit says so, right? Let's look at John chapter 4, verse 34. And this is a passage after Jesus was at the, the story. is called the woman at the well. He's ministered to her. The, his disciples are looking for him. They say, surely he's been out there ministering all day. He's hungry. And it picks up with this verse in 34, his answer to them when they come and say, Jesus, come on, it's time to go to Western Sizzling, right? Wherever you go eat lunch. It, uh, verse 34, praise the Lord. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will. Can you say that with me? To do the will of him who sent me and, let's say it together, to finish his work. Jesus was found by the disciples doing the will of God and finishing God's work. Now, many times we think God sent his son Jesus as the ultimate sacrifice. That's why he's in the earth, and that's God's will, plan. He loves us so much he gave his only begotten son, right? And all of that is true. But God's work is not finished just because Jesus came. God's work is in our life just like it was in Jesus' life, yes, right? We are created as people. God has a destiny for our life. And we must also be like Jesus, and we must do the will of him and finish his work. I've been to Walmart lately. It amazes me. I forgot coffee four different trips that's dangerous. I had the decaf, but that just doesn't do it at 4 o'clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? And Carla has this energy drink, drink thing. Don't tell her, but I made me one of those one morning because the coffee just couldn't cut it. And uh, I wasn't going to let sleep win. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Jesus said, it's time to go to work. It's time to do God's will. Let's look at verse 35. I'll move on. Do you not say... There are still four months, and then comes the harvest. That's what people say when they're planting crops. They say, okay, we've got the, the dirt's tore up, the seed's planted in the dirt, we're going to fertilize, we're going to kill out all the bugs, we're going to keep the weeds out of it. But four not, months from now, we've got to be ready to do what? Harvest. Nobody plants a garden hoping it won't grow. Right? 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 You put a garden in or... Maybe it's some of this, this is, I don't know if any of that's real. Don't get me in trouble, okay? But if it were real, somebody would have to tend to it, right? And in order to have a harvest of what you're going to have coming out of your seed bed, somebody's got to tend to the soil, got to tend to the crop so that it produces a harvest and an end result. Amen? Yes. Let's look at verse 36. And he who reaps receives wages. The people who go get the harvest in. The harvest is so large that not just the farmer can get it done. The farmer's got to have helpers, right? The farmer's got to have people to come and work and bring the harvest to the barn. But they get paid. There are rewards for reaping the harvest. And he gathers fruit for eternal life. Jesus has shifted already 
the whole passage, he went from dealing with the woman at the well to now he's teaching the disciples the purpose of why he came, and that's to win souls. Jesus doesn't want anybody to not go to heaven, right? right. He wants everybody to be saved and everybody to have eternal life with the Heavenly Father, right? I'm on that journey. I know you are too. Say amen, amen. right? That's where we're headed. But it's not just where we're headed. It's who we're going to bring with us that's important, yeah. right? Who are you going to take to heaven with you, right? Yeah. My fishing pole's not going to go there. You can stuff it in the casket, my deer rifle, my bow, my crossbow, right? My targets, you name it, all my hunting stuff because that's what I like to do, right? That's where I go get alone with me. And, and have some me time, right? Tried to get Carla to go. I told her, you can bring your camera, and I'll let you have all the first shots you need before I kill it, right? <laughs> Come on, somebody, right? Amen. She won't go, though. She's afraid she'll like it, and then she'll have to shoot one, right? <laughs> it's the truth, right? Yeah. The one who is reaping the harvest will receive a wage and gathers fruit not just, we're not just talking about wheat and grain that comes from a planted field. We're talking about human people yeah. who need Jesus and they need to be brought in. The harvest needs to come in. That both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. Now, you may hire people to come in and, you know, modern farming's a lot different. We're talking about in Jesus' day in the scripture here. But you may hire people even to help you to get the seed in the ground, right? But once that ground's covered up, the seed's covered, and you've buried, everybody say buried the seed. Buried. You bury the seed in the earth. There's a process that's taken place. And Jesus referred to the natural harvest when he said, you say four months. But he's referring to the ongoing process that in spiritual harvest, and what is spiritual harvest? When you go look up the word harvest in the New Testament, it only refused to, refers to human souls coming to God. Every time the word harvest is used in the New Testament, it is referring to people coming to Jesus and having eternal life. That's a pretty powerful statement, is it not? It is. And so this harvest that he is talking about, and I mentioned this last week, I'm going to bump on it just a little today. I always looked at that. I'd never heard it preached before until I began to study over this passage. The Holy Spirit showed me something. Boom. Jesus, I've always heard it preached that there's a grain field out there and that it is white unto harvest because he's about to say that and it is ready to be reaped. I don't believe that anymore. Looking at the word now, I believe that the seed was in the ground, but the harvest wasn't there yet because he said, you say four months from now and then the harvest. That's what we say. That seed had to die and come back alive and then produce fruit that would bear that you could go harvest the wheat. Getting it, getting it cut off and getting it in a wagon and getting it back to the barn is just part of the process. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But Jesus, I believe, was looking at the planted field, and he's saying, you say four months from now, we're going to have harvest in that field. I'm telling you, right now, the, the field is ripe. And it is ready for human souls to come to Christ. Now, this last, I said all that to read this last portion. Both he who sows, the people who put the seed in the ground, the people who plow the dirt, the people who's going to work on it, who sows and who reaps may rejoice together. If the farmer does good and he reaps a good crop, then the sower's going to have a job in the next season of planting. If he fails and it doesn't get reaped, he may not have a job. Everybody has their place in the sowing and reaping cycle of farming and farming in Christ. It's called husbandry. I deleted it out of my notes to save you time. Let's read on. I'm having fun. I don't know about you. Verse 37. For in this, the saying is true. One sows, another reaps. Now, most farmers in that day, that was not how the process worked. They may have got helpers to help them sow, but most farmers, they farmed because they had to sow it, they had to weed it, they had to hoe it, they had to get the bugs out of it, they had to do anything. 
If bugs got in your wheat, I don't know what that even means. I'm not a farmer, but I'd be out there picking them bugs off, putting them in a bag, getting rid of them out of my wheat so my wheat could be healthy. What, and we know about wheat and tares, right? The tares grow up and look like wheat, but they don't produce any fruit, right? And so if the tares are coming, I'd be out there pulling tares, putting it in something, getting it out of my crop because the tares take the energy of the ground and it causes the ground to not put all of its minerals into the wheat, which is the harvestable crop. Come on, somebody. All right, verse 38. Let me keep me. One sows and another reaps. We work together. Sometimes you may be the sower and the reaper. Sometimes you may sow and somebody else will reap that harvest. Amen. Verse 38, Jesus said, I sent you to reap. That's our job, is to reap the ripe. That for which I have sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. You didn't plow. You didn't get the rocks out of the ground. We have a, go, we have a garden. It's not a great big garden, but it's out at the property, and, and we're trying to break up the ground. And I'm telling you, if that ground ain't rocky, I'm not standing, Okay. You can plow it, and there's, it's, it looks like a rock garden. And I don't know how many hundreds of rocks we pulled out of there, but you know what? We plowed it again, and they came back. They produced another rock crop. Seriously, is that not the truth, right? Rocks all over that hill, you know what I'm saying? So it, it, I sent you to reap for that which you have not labored. Somebody's got to get the rocks out. But the guy down here that gets the wheat he may not have got the rocks out of the garden. Do you understand what I'm saying? Somebody's got to work the ground and work the plants to reap a harvest. I sent you to reap for that which you have not labored. I said this last week. It needs to be said again and again and again. There's been more seed sown in our generation than any other generation before. We have more access to knowledge about anything you want to know about that's in the Bible. I'm not talking about all the knowledge. and Not everything on the Internet is good. No, it's not even right. true. Right. Wikipedia doesn't always tell the truth, okay? But the Word of God does. This book is right, okay? But I, there are certain websites that you can trust. And you can go there and you can learn things about God and His Word. I mean, there's one called Got Questions. I use it as a reference a lot of times just to pull up information quickly and easily. If I'm thinking about it, what was this? It's just 600 and something thousand questions, and it's growing all the time as they grow it on this website, and it's free. If it's free, it's for thee, <laughs> right? And so I go out there, and, and you can type in har the word harvest, and it's going to pull up all kind of articles about harvest, okay? I sent you to reap. It's available to us is what I'm saying. Yes. For that for which you have not worked for. You hadn't done the work, but you're going to get the harvest. Others have labored. Other people before you have prayed this generation in. Other people have sown stuff into the generations that are around us where our move of God is locked up in their heart, and it's up to us to go reap the harvest of what God wants to do in this time, this day, this hour. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. We get to partner together in what God wants to do now in the harvest. Amen? There's a place for every believer that wants to do God's work and God's will to do what the Father said, the will of God and the work of God. You got that? Those are two. They're the same. Good morning. Yeah, Say, that's the same, Pastor. That's the same. I promise you. The will of God and the work of God have to flow together. That's God's agenda. And God wants you to get on his, his, your train on his rails. One rail is the will of God and one rail is the work of God. And the will of God is for all of us to be involved in the destiny of reaching lost souls, people who don't know Jesus Christ. We need to be a harvest machine at the Bridge Church. I hadn't even got started yet. I'm just warming up. Amen.